Welcome to Jadekind Gaming. My name is Adam, and today I have another Dwarven Forge unboxing. I will be unboxing the Cree Colony. Uh, this is Encounter 14 from the Dungeon of Doom. According to the box here on the outside, it has 121 pieces. And, uh, and basically, it is the Burrows. So, oh wow, you can tell how long ago this was uh, made. It has the old style thank you still. <laughs> um, I, of course, of course got painted. Um, and it, I guess, is worth noting from some of the stuff that Dwarven Forge has mentioned. Most likely... They will not be restocking this set, but instead, if you want to get the burrows once this runs out of stock, your options will basically be a series of smaller sets. There's another box in there. I'll get it. Got it. All right. So, um... This one, I wanted to, to grab because, to me at least, it seems like this is, for the most part, what you need to, to get burrows. I'm like, if I get this set, I probably have all the burrows I'm going to end up needing and be good to go. So I picked this up and we'll take a look. Alright, so starting off. Looks like we get, um, I guess it's Cree in here. Ooh. Ooh. A lot of the plugs. But we get, we get some things to put them in, so that's fine. Sure, let's start. These are two identical. Yeah. We get two of these. And these are the Cree. I, personally, tend to do, let's see, just like whiz kids minis for the most part, which are not necessarily always as nice as some of the Dwarven Forge stuff, but uh, definitely cheaper if you look at what this mini is costing. But when you get them in the big sets, eh, you don't necessarily notice. So, I mean, this this is a big one. Hey, whiz kids. We need for scale. Also, they don't have bases, which I mean, depending on your personal taste, may be a reason to avoid the WizKids minis. Um, but I enjoy the nice, even one inch bases. So this is. Um, I guess an arachnid? It's got eight legs, right? Um, although, is that if that's supposed to be a body segment there? Because it has one, two, three, four, and then on the other side. So, plus it has a stinger like a scorpion. Yeah, some giant bug thing. And yeah. start by pulling from the bottom of this, so we have these. Zoom back out. <laughs> so there are two of these here. There are big, beefy anchor magnets. Okay, so one, and this root and this rock form a space. Two, three, four, space here, space there. I mean, you get half a space because it's up onto the wall. But many of, if you're used to their dungeons, most of those have a half space at certain parts. Space right here. Anyways, let's grab some plugs here. We get these little plugs. And we can just fit one here. 
and I guess each plug is basically two spaces with that rock delineating the center. So that's I'm trying to give a scale for some of these because one of the biggest thing looking at what videos I was able to find on these is figuring out what the real scale of these are. Um, so there are Okay. Of just these normal plugs like this, there are 21. Which, if I remember, basically almost fills all of the, the holes with just normal ground. So if you don't want any of the fancy stuff in there, you, you can use almost all the pieces and uh, just use the normal plugs to put normal ground there. But there are some fancier plugs. Get a couple. Ooh, of these. Okay. Let me just pop these out. I think they said you can. Yeah, you can kind of grab onto the little rock if you got at least a bit of nails. Um, and I'll point out just sort of the sides there. You got little rocks down at the bottom, which probably keep these from falling through but the texture there. So if you wanted to leave it open as a hole through or something, you could do that. And we have the spike pit. So spikes do actually come protruding out above the top here. Oh no. But, uh, A little glossy down in the bottom. Yeah, so you get those, a couple of those. A big grouping of these. So there should be six of these, which are the eggs. So you get that. These are done on a transparent um, material. You could shine some light up through them or even just from the side. They kind of look unearthly as there is some transparency to them. Um, but they're like Cree eggs, I suppose. So we have six of those, and we have five of these. There are little holes on each of the room's exits. And so these are used for doing like elevation with some other pieces later, but uh, so we'll probably have five of those from this first box, and just one, one root stump here, which has a single anchor magnet uh, in one of the feet, um, but it's all decorated underneath here, I think, you know, of the idea they would always say is you could do that. But yeah, so this is useful for elevating a build uh, above some of the passages. So that's our first box. It's working my way down from the way that they were in that large box. We have another one. Yeah, this has some dungeon things in it, because a great way to get into this burrows is you can just start in it if you want. But we got passage walls and our broken dungeon wall. There we go, got a little room you can put on the side with a hole in the wall, and then 
Boom. Lines right up. Into the burrows. So that's that's a nice way to just be able to enter the burrows from a dungeon. Change environments. Transition piece. Very useful. Mm. We get a couple of these. Huh. Which I know full well are from the sides. Also, dungeon pieces. You know? But from the top, you could basically put that in line with any theme. And this is. Um, I think they said you could use it as a transition if you needed, like, from something to go down into the burrows. But it also lets you use any of these here in any other environment. So these are useful elsewhere as well now. So you get a couple of those. Uh, and no anchor magnet on those. Though they'll likely be in the middle of stuff. Four. Four of these. Lots of anchor magnets on these, though. Um, so again, another room with four exits from it. Um, only certainly smaller than the one before. Just plug that up. One. There's some roots there. You can tell by the edges of this that there's two there. There's a space there. Here, here. And here. So, playable space. Just gotta know how to discern where the spaces are in this. So. number of these. Uh, seven. So six here. One more. These are little rooms. They have, again, the peg to stick, so they only have one little anchor magnet, but they can stick into the, the end there. So we have that. So one, two spaces on that, basically. That uh, can also be used if you want to have a little mound of eggs at a dead end or something. So, that. And the last things in this box. Another thing. It's one of these little rune magnetic pieces that's like your goal or objective in the Dungeon of Doom. So you do get one of those. But um, <laughs> there are two stilts that are the same height as this tripod stilt. So we get a different type of stilt, again, to raise things up. Yep, and there is metal on the top. The magnet's kind of weak to even hold that, but it's, uh, I guess, help with trying to Keep it balanced. Keep it where it goes when you're setting something there. Um, of course, bang in the bottom. And they look like layers of stone and earth and roots. So they kind of blend in when you're using them. Since with uh, you know, this, this layout, it's going to be kind of noticeable. And I guess, to get a standard height, uh, these, which means also this, are the height of a wall including the floor. So, that's that's the height that we get on these. Because that's noteworthy. 
box three. Looks like it's got another room and some of the elevation pieces. Okay, so. Two of this other room. So. Those. Which are as long as the bigger room we've had so far, but narrower. Um, so do we see each one, you know, kind of a step down, big. Yeah, going down to there. Um, but yeah, so this new one here. Again, if you fill up the floor, space, space, three, four, five across there. One, two, three, four across that way. Yeah. Uh, again, with uh, four exits. You know, all the detail along the outside of them as well. And in my mind at least, like the way that I always envision these is there the burrows are like the the tunnels in uh, Diablo. Like what is it, the maggot layer and all that? Like those are kinda what they, they always remind me of. Is that kind of environment. Um, and they're a Dwarven Forge piece that doesn't have full height walls. But because I'm envisioning that it's very quickly like closing over um, it's not really bothered me for some reason, but uh, they still have detail and detail all on the side there. We get let's see, mm, two of this piece for elevation, which goes straight up. showed before this piece that we had uh, come on and it will transition there and we will get to the two we have three one two three of the same purposed piece that curves. So that way coming from here. <laughs> so you can things up so we'll take a look here um, anchor magnets roots underneath on the side details peg here where something can go in um, they have this little undercut here that'll kind of hold hold a mini A spot right there where you can sit, and then you'd be out here. And on this one, we have two magnets. This part doesn't have one. More just roots and rocks underneath it, detailing it. We have just a few. These couple of rocks here that look random are the same height, so you can kind of balance your mini between them. This rock here, of course, will be a place to stand. Stand on this one, then again you're getting to the top. So that from this box is some stilts or ramps, I guess. Our penultimate box here looks to be the the tunnels. Uh, a T and a bunch of straight passages do it. Okay, what do we got? We have Start with these five. So you get five of these, and we will 
plug that up there. It means it's four across. One, two, three, four across. Make your magnets on both sides. Rocks and roots detailed around. You get five of this. These you put here, and they're your T intersection. There we go. So you get basically one, two, three, and then four over there. All right. I feel like the two edges kind of hang off a little, but uh, maybe you're supposed to stand on the roots, on the rocks, and then between them. Yeah, that works. Which feels, therefore, you can tell, like, I mean, you're going to end up with, with things where you know, things are not matching in length. How do you, how do, you do this? For, it always has to, like, match the same number, like they're, they're two by two tiles, or they're Three by three or four, by four, you know, you have to have that that you know sameness. Otherwise, it's going to get off the the grid. And and how do you get back if you get off the grid? <laughs> well, the rest of this box in front of me is these. And there are thirteen of these, which are one one inch. They got a hole on one end and a peg on the other and a magnet on the bottom. So if you put the peg in here, now all of a sudden you've gotten back onto the grid. So instead of them sticking to a specific grid on this system, they just gave you a bunch of one inch pieces that you can get back on track as needed to help it feel more organic. And it's a pretty plain piece, but it's only a short bit. And our final box. What have we got here? Eight. So we got a bunch of these. Bags of two. We have ten of these. These. What about these things? Have two magnets. Okay. Um here. Three spaces? One, two, three, and a 90 degree turn. What you need? 90 degree bends in your uh, burrows. Simple as that. But there's more. What if I want larger turns in my burrows, you might say? Well, don't worry. Dwarven Forge has us covered with these four. Which is one, two, three, four, five. I am already getting to the point where I just see it. Um, I've watched them do it over and over again on their videos. And I was like, I, I didn't see it. But just... Part of it's just really also the feeling of you know how large the base is. So you know around where it's going to be, and then it's easier to see the spots. But uh, a little rock in there. Bending right there. Yeah, so you have a larger, larger curve here. S turn it, whatever you need. 
Right. Just take the rest of this stuff out. Okay. Three of these. These. There. So you can have your normal ground, or you could have a column. Which still allows for a space. It's only really filling up one of them. Um, though if you use it, say, in a tunnel, it basically blocks it. But here, you can still get around. And there are just stone pillar with a root winding around it. So that. Or we get six of these. Now these are in the shape. They will fit right in there. It's, it's designed be kind of a spider's web, which I guess if you have, especially you use the this and you're kind of going down layers and you have to break through the spider's web to fall. Oh no! You know, you can, you can do that. Um, I guess I should say the column. Just height comparison. Oh, actually, I bet the column's too else to compare. The column also works as a stilt to help balance things, so that's also noteworthy. Um, but these, and there are six of these, and they're a little, you know, rubbery, stretchy, just slightly spiderweb thing. But I mean, they can also just go wherever. Move them around. So they're just sort of general little spiderweb bits as an option. Just one of the ways to put out some spiderwebs. So maybe we have this room, but we want this room to be the dead end. This is like where you're trying to get. So we have nine plugs right here so these you can fill up this and you just have one entryway it comes to this room and it terminates here uh, there are nine of these in the set and it just uses thing no no magnet just a peg simple no piece just to immediately end a room. There we go. That is the Cree colony. It's a lot. <laughs> oh, is it 121 pieces? Um, yeah. But it basically makes me feel like, okay, I can now just do a Burroughs environment. You know, a lot of the other ones, you know, you get a few of the rooms and whatever, you're like, well, I can do a little bit, like, at this point, I can, I can burrow to my heart's content, um, <laughs> as needed. And before I end things, I am gonna, I'm just gonna put something quick together just to show kind of an example if, if, if you haven't seen what it is in total, just what the burrows can be, so. So I got a big layout here of some burrows. Uh, now, in this, I did not use either of the whole pieces. Those are largely for using burrow stuff in other environments anyways. Uh, I also didn't use any of the webs. They're just variety for different kind of an environment. Uh, I will also note, um, I have a good number of plugs left. I have a few of the just immediate end caps left several of the little one inch extenders left. So all these things 
are things that you feel like oh so important because you have to have them um, to make some of the stuff work with all the extra endings and you know the the off bits but just randomly making an environment I ended up with plenty of them left so it seems like there are a good number in here to go with what's in here also I have a stilt left uh, or a ramp left rather and the end caps the one would go to this one and then down onto this one uh, largely because I chose to go an extra high here and so given the stilts that are included if you go more than one level high you're probably gonna run out before you run out of rings that's that is something to be aware of um, you probably need more if you want to go extra high you didn't really need to but uh, just you know the end idea of this sort of descent down where is it little spot there to prop the mini um, so this descent down into the tunnel um, immediately go into a room with a choice if you choose to come around this way then before you end up with freedom you come across the Cree guarding their egg nest um, and they're not gonna be happy with that so uh, you can fight them of course you know Cree eggs are very valuable uh, you can try and run or you could have been smarter and gone the other way and you just gone around anyways avoided them all together I'm gonna take this off before my elbow knocks it down so there's a bunch of little twisting paths that all wind up in the the Kree's nest over here um, getting you go around here and there's these spike pits if you want to try and get the rune I can't reach. The build is so large, I can barely reach the other side of the table. I'd have to ask the other player to move my, my mini. Um, otherwise, just little twisting paths around here as... And we lift this chunk off. I'm using one of the pillars uh, as a stilt here. For exiting here and finding where it breaks into the dungeon itself. Um, yeah, so just a variety of different twists and turns. You know, if you didn't want to use the Cree, if you have a bunch of spiders, those could be spider eggs. Um, and you got the spider webs. I mean, I know I have a bunch of spiders. I would probably at some point use that. Um, another thing just to point out, they look like they're so squishy they're not squishy they are hard plastic like everything else but it just has that appearance always to me when i saw them so i was like when i'm building it, i was like i should point that out yeah it's translucent because it's a translucent plastic but it's dwarvenite like anything else so uh, otherwise yeah i mean and yeah this is i, I use the train terrain trays I, I started building without them I will say you want to have terrain trays with this because they are a lot of little fiddly pieces that can spin and get out of out of alignment and you're trying to and you're trying to make a bunch of separate tunnels line up terrain trays very helpful um, from the factory the magnets are not necessarily stuck. I have eight magnets that were not really attached very well. They came unglued. Um, I mean, I've had that issue with some other Corbin Forge, and you just use some super glue, put it back, and it'll it'll be fine. But uh, you may have to reattach some magnets with better super glue because of the older construction. Um, Simple. I mean, it's it's designed to be dirt with rocks and wood. It's it's very brown with a little bit of gray. So that that is definitely something to be aware of. It's you know a few shades of brown with brown roots and then little gray for rocks. So uh, it's not the bright, colorful option. But if you need you know earth tunnels, that's what burrows is. And 
if you get it while the Cree colony is still available, it is a large set that's, you know, <laughs> able to cover a big chunk of table um, and just kind of fill out all or at least nearly all Burroughs needs, I can imagine here. So um, I'll link down to Dwarven Forge's website below where you can pick it up. Uh, either this or they, they also have smaller Burroughs sets. Um, and eventually it'll just be the smaller Burroughs sets. Thank you for watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff that does help me out and I do appreciate it. And thank you for watching. Bye.